Hi, I know what you're thinking. Why do we need another guide on activity lifecycle? There are many videos already, but I think they have three main problems. First, activity lifecycle is shown as a diagram from top to bottom. We indeed have a start and end points, but the life cycle is not aligned. It's also shown without relation to the state of the component. It's hard to see the current activity state. Is it visible or active? The second one is outdated information. Some diagrams state that Android can destroy activity from on pause function, which is not the case since Android Honeycomb. And the last one is complexity. Some activity lifecycle diagrams are too complicated. While it's good to know all the possible callbacks in the lifecycle, in practice you will use only the core set of callbacks. In this practical guide we will see why the activity lifecycle is essential and how to use it correctly. I'll also show you another way of the activity lifecycle diagram, which you can find more understandable. Let's go! If you look at some Java programs, we will find a main method to launch the code. However, there's no such concept in Android. Instead of this, the Android system gives us a lifecycle to operate and invoke specific callbacks that correspond to the state of the component. Activity is the main component of the Android application and it has its own lifecycle. Good understanding and implementation of the activity lifecycle will ensure that your application is not consuming resources and draining a battery, not crashing when the user navigates around the app, and not losing the user progress. Now let's look at the lifecycle diagram. Here we will see how our activity goes between four essential states. The activity doesn't exist, the activity instance is created but it's not visible, Activity is visible, but the user can interact with it, and activity is visible, and the user can interact with it. When our activity transitions between these states, the Android system invokes specific callbacks. For this, activity class provides us a base of six core functions – on create, on start, on resume, on pause, on stop, and on destroy. Now we'll look at them one by one. OnCreate is the main Android activity lifecycle callback because of two reasons. It's the first method called when we launch an activity from the home screen or intent, and it's the only method that is required for the developer to implement an activity. Use this callback to do some startup logic in your activity, that should happen only once. For example, you can set up UI, initialize view model or observe live data. At this step, your activity is not yet visible and remains at this state until onCreate function finishes. Then it quickly moves to the next state and onStart function is called. In onStart, our activity is visible and in background. In the background means that the user can't interact with it, like pressing a button or scroll the list. Unlike onCreate, which is called only once during the activity lifecycle, OnStart function can be called multiple times. For example, it's also called when the user opens another activity and then press the back button. The typical usage of this callback is to initialize components that you release during onStop function or adjust some resources. This activity state is also transient like onCreate and the following method onResume code. In onResume, our activity is visible and in the foreground. The activity is in focus and the user can interact with it in any way. The activity stays in this state until something takes away the focus from the screen, such as a phone call or when the user navigates to another activity. Implement this callback as a counterpart of onPause function. If you release some resources in onPause, make sure that you initialize them again here in onResume. The next one is onPause and the system calls this method when our activity loses the focus. For example, if the user navigates to another activity or enters a multi-window mode. It's the first indication that the user leaves activity. Typical usage of onPause include pausing operations that are not needed while activity in this state, such as animations, and releasing unneeded resources. For example, you can release the broadcast receivers, GPS sensor, or any other resource that you don't need. Remember that everything that you release should be initialized again in onResume callback. Previously, the Android system can kill the application process from this state in some cases. For example, if the system needs memory. And in some sources, you can find information that you need to save your application data here if you don't want to lose it. 
However, it's not the case since the Android Honeycomb and now the system can kill the process from this state. on pause execution should be very brief, so don't call here any heavy load shutdown operations. The current activity is still visible and any delays here will slow the user transition to another activity. So if you want to do some database transaction or network call, then onstop is the better place. In onstop, our activity again is not visible. It usually happens when the user navigates to another activity or press the home button. Use this callback to release resources that are not needed while the activity is not visible. For example, if your activity observes some dynamic data, then we can stop it here in onstop. You can also perform massive shutdown operations, for example, saving user data to the database or perform network calls. At this state, activity is not yet destroyed. The instance lives in the back stack, and it means that it remembers all the state inside, including the views. When the user opens the activity, the Android system will not create the instance again. Instead, it will take it from the memory. For example, it will restore the user input if the user entered something into the edit text view, press the home button, and then open the app again. Android system can kill the application process from this state in case of low memory. If it happens, it will kill the entire application process with all the components inside. But even in this case, there is still a possibility to save a user data so it can be restored later. OnDestroy is the final callback that the activity receives. This function is called before the activity becomes non-existent. This callback happens in two cases. The first is configuration change, for example, rotation or change the language from the settings. In this case, Android system temporarily destroys and then recreates the activity with a new configuration. And the second is activity is finished. For example, you manually called finished function from the code. Usually, there's advice to use this callback to clean up everything else that has not yet been cleaned before activity destroyed. However, you should not rely on this callback. In case of low memory, the Android system can kill the application process and then on destroy is not called. Instead of this, use on stop or on pause to save user data and release resources. In summary, you will probably don't need to implement all these callbacks. Usually activities are not that complex. However, a good understanding and implementation of the activity lifecycle will help you avoid many pitfalls in your application.